Today, now, I'd like to talk about the primary schools of Malahide in the 1950s. Now, in 1950, Malahide was a small town. And like a lot of small towns in Ireland, there was no secondary schools whatsoever. So um, there was only just primary schools. There was the Red School at Yellow Walls and Dublin Road. Then there was the parochial hall or the boys' school, which was just down beside the church. And then later in the 50s, there was St. Oliver Plunkett's School, which originally was called St. Sylvester's Boys' School. Later in the 50s, there was, a, there was a secondary school, believe it or not, and that was for girls, and it was called Stella Morris. And also, of course, there was the Protestant Boys' School, St. Andrews, that was built in 1824. That was probably the oldest one in Malahide, actually. I'll start maybe with the Red School. Now, the way it operated at that time was, there was one room for the babies and sixes, as they say. Nowadays, you'd be calling them uh, infants or senior infants. And boys and girls were both in those classes. After that, the boys split from the girls. The boys went down to the boys' school and the girls went on into the other, the other part of the red school. So in that, I recall, there was one big room and there was a gallery, like a stepped gallery, which I sat on. So one class would be sitting up on the gallery and one class would be sitting at desks and we used to rotate around. I had two teachers, I remember. I think Mrs. MacDonald was one and there was um, Mrs. Delaney. And uh, she was a lovely lady. And I think the principal then was Miss Walsh at the time. Now, I remember actually using a slate uh, to do some writing on in the early days. So there was no cloak room, so there was a big box. So you came in, you took off your coat, you threw it in the box. And at the end of the day, the, the teacher would pick up a coat and she'd say, whose coat is this? You put up your hand, she'd throw it up the gallery at you and you caught it. <laughs> the other thing too was, there was no in, uh, inside toilets. The toilets were outside. So it was fairly cold out there, but you had to go to the toilet. Uh, um, you, you'd remember it because it was on uh, the winter's day anyway. Um, there was a coal fire or turf fire or wooden fire, whatever was available. And in, on the fire, there used to be sometimes people who weren't gone home for lunch would bring cocoa in their billy cans. And that would be put on the fire. Then somebody would be given the job of watching it, that it didn't boil over. And when it was going to boil over, they'd raise their arm and tell the teacher. And then she'd get somebody to take it off, or she would take it off and let the next person eat, eat it up. Now, anybody around the, the village and that would go home for lunch those days. But the people from the hill made a bit of a journey. And he used to come down by bus. And we called them the hill hoppers. I think it was because he used to hop on the bus to go home. Because <laughs> it was hill hopper. That's the only thing I can think of. But they would be the ones who came down with their billy cans and their cocoa, which was very, when you think, it was very civilised from the times that were in it. So that was that. And then after that, I went off down to the parochial hall to the boys' school after the two years. And I think originally it might have been a two-room building, one for girls and one for boys. But when I got there, it was just one big room. But there was two teachers, and each teacher had three classes each. So you had first, second, third, and you had fourth, fifth, and sixth. But there might be even a seventh class. Seventh class was just where you had to wait till you were 14 before you went off to work. So if you weren't going on to the tech or anything else, you just hung around basically in the in the seventh class, which was just an add-on to the sixth class. The playground was just a rough playground as you came out. Still there, just between the, the building and, and the, the well. And it went up and around the church where the parochial building is now, the um, parish centre is built today. You could play marbles. It was the marble season would start the conquer season, you could understand, because it depends on when the conquerors were on the trees and people would go up around the castle to collect their conquerors. And in some cases, then you'd boil them in there or put them in on the fire and all sorts of things and try and toughen them up. I don't know if people are aware of the game, but you put it on a string and you batter the other guy's conqueror and whoever could split the other fellow, then that conqueror won. So that would be a number one conqueror. So if you had a number five conqueror, it means that you had conquered five other people with it. That was that, was that game. And then, of course, marbles was just marbles. And uh, again, you had sometimes big, big ball bearings. If you get them from railways or something, you'd have a big ball bearing, a big steel ball. So that was a, uh, that was the one to have. So you could crush other marble players with that, you know. But OK, going back to the actual school itself, in, in, in the classes. Now, Mr. Joyce was a fine teacher, but he did have a bit of a temper. And well, sometimes he might lose the temper at people. And you would be careful about that. There was something going on and one of the lads was at the maggot or something and he picked up the duster, which was a sort of a wooden thing with, in those days because it was all 
chalk and blackboards. And he fired it at the man, the, one of the lads. And he ducked and it went out through the window, broke the window. Oh, God, there was pandemonium, you know. That was that. Now, the other teacher, I think it was a Mr. Grady at one stage because he used to play football when was down on the green. Um, uh, but I was there until 1954. Uh, 50 to 52 was in the Red School. 52 to 54, I was at the parochial hall. And there we went after that, um, the new school was built. And that, that's really, you know, a story for another day. The big transfer from the old parochial hall up to what was St. Sylvester's Boys School at the top of the rise. So I leave it there for the moment now. Thank you.